Alright, y'all, we back with another episode. I'm here with my guy Reese. What's going on, y'all? You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk some real estate today. Yes, sir. Um, we here, Coach the Organic. You know what I mean? We're going to give y'all some juice, some gems, some facts. We're going to talk the real. We're going to talk a little bit how Brody came up, his story, whatever, how he got into real estate, and what he's doing now, what he's planning to do. And we'll get right into it. So, yes, first off, I ask everybody, where you from? I'm from Philly. I'm okay. uh, from Philly, yes sir. Okay, what part of Philly? Uh, Northeast. Northeast for a Okay, okay, shout out yeah. Northeast. Shout out Philly in general, shout out Northeast. Alright, so, how was it, like, how was it growing up in Philly? Growing up in Philly? Uh, it's probably just like any other, you know what I'm saying? It's like growing up in any other, it's a lot of... How could I explain it? I don't know, bro. Philadelphia is Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Me, personally, it's like, I'm used to it, boy. Right, Other people right, come right. to Philly, they're like, yo, this shit crazy. Like, <laughs> I, I thought this was regular. Like, <laughs> so know. what would you what would you say is one crazy thing that you would say, people would say, but it's regular to you? It's About Philly? Down. Yeah. Oh, man. Just, like, the aggression in people. And, like... <laughs> Like, cause don't you be in Philly, right? Like, you I mean, know how that that's is. That's why I'm laughing. Like, I always thought that was normal, but not till you start traveling. It's like, no, people in Philly aggressive as fuck. Really <laughs> shit, like, really drop everything and rumble you in five seconds, bro. Take it all uh, away. Shit, nah, I ain't lying, though. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold. All my people in Philly ain't like that, but there's a lot of people that be fucking. They be fucking. It's bad funny, but I love Philly, though. Shout out Philly. But, um, so, uh, so how was it growing up? Like, um, you went to school, like everything raised in Northeast. Okay, so basically for the most part, yeah. Okay, okay. So how was that? How was school? School was cool, bro. I never like I was a tight kid growing up. I ain't never had no problem with school, bro. Okay. I played sports. I was good with everybody in the school. What's everybody from cool niggas, street niggas, nerds, the Asians, everybody. Mm. So what sports teachers, you play? Teachers, I played football, basketball. I did a year of wrestling and track, but my main thing is football, basketball, and track. Like every year, okay. seventh grade. That's a bit mainly basketball. I ain't gonna track. lie, I gave up football like tenth grade, bro. <laughs> Niggas started that biggest shit. I'm like, oh hell no, I'm like, cause I was on the freshman football team. That shit was hard, right. and I would look over at varsity team. I'm like, yo, them niggas. Biggest what shit. position you play in football? I was either corner or wide receiver. Okay, okay. Corner or wide. I'm Probably always on the corner. wings, you feel me? That's mad funny. You look like wide receiver though, I ain't gonna find any position in football, you definitely probably play wide receiver. So I basketball know. and track. So what position you play in basketball? Basketball. <coughs> so I'm six four and that's tall, but relative to it. Basketball, basketball that's, that's not that tall. God, that's like God, that's like starting God, point point God, right, yeah, right. So growing up, I always played if I would've went to college, I would've been guard, like you said, mm -hmm. but growing up, I was always center, big man. Uh, I love playing that shit. Yeah. I'm always punching that <laughs> shit, bro. Like, niggas is not scoring, bro. What you talking about? Take that shit somewhere else. Nah, uh, fuck it, man. Definitely fuck it. All right, so how, how, how would you, like, academics? Because I know you do your real estate thing now, and that take that definitely takes some type of, you know, some dope classes. Yeah, okay, so you're always smart. You're always smart, always, <laughs> always, smart, always good at I never had a problem with school, bro. Yeah. <coughs> Honestly, I had this always cool. I was cool with everybody, passed my classes, who was teacher. <coughs> Shit like that, my bad. Just kicking my ass. Nah, Gucci. But, um, alright, so, um, good in class, play sports, basketball, track. Mm -hmm. So, after you, so, you played, you said you played basketball, track all the way through high school. After you finished mm -hmm. high school, what you got into? Like, that's when you used to move. Matter of fact, like, yo, so, matter of fact, I just asked you what you got into first. So, my senior year in high school, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of figured I wasn't going to the league. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's what it hit you. That's what it hit you. I'm like, no, I wasn't shitty, but it's like, it hit you see it's like, like man, when you look going? at it, what it take to get to the league, the AAU teams and the all scouts the and, and all the that, traveling yeah. team, uh, games and showcases and shit, mm -hmm. I wasn't even getting, getting into none of that, bro. It's not like I was shitty, but I just wasn't getting that recognition. You wasn't getting and this that senior year, I ain't know how I was going to get that recognition. I'm mm -hmm. like, I need a plan B, so I'm like, I wanted to go into the Army. You know what I mean? I wanted to go into the army, 
had him pay for my school. Basically the same shit I wanted to go to school for. Take youth basketball for it, pay off school, mm-hmm. get a good degree type shit, travel the world. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do that with the art. Mm-hmm. So, um, but my senior year, um, I'm already, I'm damn near enlisted. All the paperwork signed, both my parents signed off on that shit. Um, but some shit, they don't usually ask for it, but they, long story short, they just wanted my medical records because it's some shit that, not like, not wrong, but they wanted my medical records. And all mm-hmm. my medical records, like as a kid, my mom always said I had asthma, like for mm-hmm. like my pop always said, no, you ain't got no asthma. But my mom was like, I don't know, she just felt like I had asthma. I never had an asthma attack. So in the army, they see that on my old, on my old medical mm-hmm. report, they like, oh, that's just qualification, can't do nothing with you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn. It's like, I'm about to graduate in two months. Nigga, y'all should have told me this a long time ago. Like, mm-hmm. I ain't got no time to apply for colleges. None of that shit, you feel me? So, I applied for community college. I went to that, got to school, picked up a job. Mm-hmm. I just told myself, like, I always had this hair fine. I said, I'm like, I got to do something. You know what I'm saying? I got to do something. Go to community college, get a job, something. So, what was your plan with the community man. college if you just, if you was going there? I just wanted an engineering degree. Okay. I wanted to ask you that. I'm not. always good with math, science, and I'm in real <laughs> estate now, but for some reason, I always had, like, an interest in houses of just, like, building shit, period. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. at the time, I wanted to do engineering. That shit was cool. You know what I'm saying? It still is cool. Right. So, so you, so you went to community college. How long, how long you went? Semester, two semesters? You graduated? I went my first two semesters. Okay. Failed down there everything. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Coming from never right, failing the class. Why, why, I got why you not, you? bro. It's just reality here, bro. Community college. It's like it's not like it's not like when you get shipped off to school and you go away to school you're somewhere else, and the only thing you got out there is school. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So the only thing it is for you to do is school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When you know a community college in your own city. Nigga, you still gotta do with everything you gotta do in your regular city, plus you gotta go to school. So that shit, like, and you gotta work, that shit, like, a second job, bro. Right. And it was, like, a third job, because you gotta go there, then you gotta get off, then you still got hours of school work, too. Nah, yeah, you know right, right, That right, shit, right. like, two jobs in it's itself. Focus, then you still you gotta work, and, like, I just got out of school, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my first car, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that, and it's like, so like right, it was hard. Yeah, it's not like age. a nigga was stupid. It's just like no, nah, it's a lot. It's a lot at that age. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, at that yeah, age. It's I mean, a lot. I we all kind of went through that at that yeah, time. Yeah, I got shit to do. If you was in school and you was trying to, you know, quote unquote, be grown and take care of yourself, you know, mm-hmm. you kind of went through a hard time around that yeah, time. Yeah, then I ended so, up. My bad. I was just gonna say. Then I, I ain't go. I went them two semesters. Didn't go the next year. Came back. Did good as shit for a semester, then I had my daughter. So mm. I don't know. <coughs> you got a daughter. Ever since then, that shit. Was so, once. so, well, so. You know, once you find out you got a baby coming, uh, everything, like. So, how old you? How old you when you had your daughter? What? 22. 22? 22. So, 22 I, I got now, a, I turned 24. I, I got a daughter too, right? <laughs> so, how did it feel having. First finding out, and then. I guess finding out, knowing when that I she was first a girl. found out, like. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm always the type of person I gotta do something with my life, right? Mm-hmm. It's like when you find out you got a baby coming, it's like, yeah, we all out here trying to get our shit together. When you find out you got a baby coming, bro, <laughs> that shit like, nigga, now you got nine months to get your shit together. <laughs> and you really don't be knowing until like two months, so nigga, you got seven months to get your shit together. No okay. And it's like, all that shit you was trying to do with your life, within the next couple years, you gotta do that shit in seven months. Crib, call, income, all that shit, bro. No so, cap. That shit just forced me to lock in, bro. I thought that was having a baby coming. Shit was game over, nigga. Like, it's time to get to work, nigga. Mm. Uh, partying over. I found out beginning of the summer, that old summer, I was going to work. Mm. Partying, man. Shit. The day I found out I had to do it, the next day I had a job. Mm. Mm. I had work. <laughs> nah, that's tough. Definitely tough, bro. So, how. All right, so I ask you how, how you felt when you found out. Now, I'm going to ask you how is it having a daughter. 
I like so like all them anxieties because once you find out you got that baby coming, bro, that shit, you have all the anxiety. I'm gonna brag on. I feel like I'm still a kid. I got a baby coming. Like I feel like right, right, right. And it's like because I watched my I watched my daughter come, so it's like, bro, it's like it's all that intensity throughout the months. Then there's then you in labor. It's like the intensity is like anxiety <laughs> is like through the roof, my nigga. But it's like. <laughs> like literally as like you sitting there as she's giving labor as soon as the baby comes out all the way like the second you i laid eyes on my daughter bro all that shit went out the window i'm just like <laughs> all right i'm good like my baby here yeah, like she's healthy like yeah. all that anxiety so all them thoughts all them shits i was stressing about had my head scrambled it wasn't as right, soon it. as i laid out on my daughter the first second she came out of this world I'm just like, all right, I'm good. She here. All right, now this time, you know what I'm saying? Because by the time my daughter was here, by the time I, I uh, by the time my daughter was here, I helped us. We both got new cars. We on our way in our crib. Yeah, yeah. Like from the time we found out she was pregnant, from the time we gave birth, shit yeah, was, was, yeah, was situated. Changing, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, so I'm right, like, right, now right. we just ready to have the baby. Right, I already right. made sure we got everything: breast pump, car seats, mm. clothes, baby shower was lit. Everything taken care of. So. Nah, that's definitely it, bro. Hundred percent. That's definitely yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a beautiful thing to have a daughter, man. I got a daughter too. That's why I definitely want to touch on that. So, yeah. all right. So you was in college, had the daughter. So how how you how you get into real estate? You, you say you was working a couple jobs, but eventually you stumbled upon real estate. So how so you my got daughter into real was born in twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and like I said, everything was together. So I end up. By the time she was like three, four months, we had a crib. You know what I'm saying? My daughter, she's three months old with her own fully furnished room, crib, mm-hmm. TV on the wall. Mm-hmm. Nice ass, you know what I'm saying? Decorated and all that shit. Like, that shit was cute as hell. <laughs> but, um, so that was like August going into January 2021. January 2021. Shit on my end, like, daughter and everybody's cool, but shit on my end. Uh, how do I explain it? Like, you know, you hit a, like a, like a, like a oh, setback. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hit like a spot where it's like, I basically had to start from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I lost everything. Type shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. Like, and now I'm in a position, I got a daughter. I got, so backtrack, before I had my daughter, um, like, 2020, I, probably like 2017, 2018, when I got to school, I'm in school, I'm working there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, this shit is a burnout. This shit is not for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I hate working jobs, bro. Like, like, like I can't explain it. Like, you probably know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. bro. Like, I gotta come do this shit every day. <laughs> this shit don't even guarantee me success, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy still doing bro. it. I'm, just, right. I'm not happy doing it. I'm if I lose this shit, I lose everything, and it didn't even right. give me nothing to go on and do nothing. Right. Nah, bro. Fuck no. Like, right. That job shit. I'm giving. I'm giving y'all niggas my all. I'm ending up with shit. You know what mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I gotta figure something out. Plus, you know, you get out of school, you're trying to figure shit out. Nigga, you going to Grand? Nigga, you went to school with fucking Dubai. I'm like, nigga, how the fuck, bro? Like, how the fuck niggas coming through Rex and shit? I'm like, bro, what the? F- I gotta figure some shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, then, I, like, everybody, I feel like if you try to figure some shit out, everybody will spend, like, mad time on YouTube, just looking up different shit on YouTube. Like, so I that's kind of how you. Do. And I picked up on a uh, whole summer real estate, mm, and um, okay. I started going to classes and shit like that. But uh, like, I would go to like classes. I wanted to learn more, but I would get in them classes, and I just be around a bunch of like suit and tie motherfuckers. You feel me? Like, where you where with the classes? Corporate. At? They would be like not like within Philly. They would be like in the counties or like okay. if they is in Philly, they downtown. Okay. Or, in nice areas and shit like okay. that. And in the corporate you get in them drones and it's a bunch of corporate people or even if it's people that are just trying to learn real estate, it was all ex-dentists, mechanics, right. doc, well, not doctors, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like right, right, They right. had a profession before they stepped into it. Right. And I ain't got shit, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, I wasn't right. no bum-ass kid, but I'm a young nigga starting from scratch, you right. feel me? So, like, 
when I first got introduced to real estate, I got introduced to it around many people like that. So mm-hmm. it was kind of intimidating for me, you know what I'm saying? Right, you know, right, right. Where we come from, we, we look at real estate like a foreign language. So, mm-hmm. so like, I don't know, I just never, I got the knowledge. I wanted to learn the knowledge, but it, I was intimidated to apply it. Cause I didn't feel like I, I needed to have certain shit together before I jumped into real estate. Okay. So I would get good knowledge, though. Like, I would definitely be around some from people. From the classes. Was, it wasn't even classes. It was more like networking events or people that was real heavy in real estate would mm-hmm. share the information. So mm-hmm. I was definitely getting some good ass information. I was getting some good ass loans, but okay. it was just still intimidating to me because everybody all corporate and shit. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Now January of 2021 come along, and um, like I said, I hit this patch, and now I'm in a situation. I got a kid and. I'm more like, you know, once you get a kid, you start thinking differently. You got to make sure it's just situated. Yeah, your prime time goes out the window. And all yeah, that and it's like, you can't be moving a certain way. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to figure some shit out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, I just picked up. I just, that was around the time. I just, it's time to put this shit to work. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, <laughs> it's the only way I can make, because the situation I was in, I'm like, bro, a job not going to fix my situation. Mm-hmm. I need bands right now. Like, I need thousands of dollars. That's the only thing that's going to help me right now. And I, I can't take some risk and shit like that to do it. So, wholesaling real estate is a way that you can legally make thousands of dollars, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars without using no money, no credit, you know, no real estate license, and you know, experience. You just middleman in the situation. It's all hustle. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I do is hustle. I got crazy hustle. So, I just put my hustle into the right shit and that shit just started clicking, bro. I just started getting crazy results. So, mm. so yeah, that was January of 2021. I saw I ended up selling my first property. I sold my and I started in Philly. I'm born and raised in Philly. I ended up in Chicago. I sold my first two properties in Chicago in like like March or April. Mm. It didn't really take that long. It took me. It took me most of the time to learn real estate. Mm. Just um, cause like I said, coming from where we come from, learning real estate is like a foreign language. Right? No, it's true. Trying to learn real estate, trying to learn Spanish. And nobody just hands out. Know what I'm saying? No, it's true. That's nobody like trying to learn Spanish. It take time. You can't pick that shit up overnight. And nobody just trying to hand you that information. Like yeah, you gotta time. go find that shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so, it so time. your first deal was January 2021. How, how much was that deal? My first deal was five racks. That's a great deal. My first deal was five. A great racks. deal for your first for your first. That's a great wholesale deal for your yeah, first yeah. wholesale deal for everybody out there. You go, you, you know what I'm saying? You go sit there and wholesale a deal. You find a property, you find a buy, you find a seller. Basically, you yeah, you middleman a property. So when you wholesale a property, you find somebody who wants to sell the property and you plug them in with somebody who wants to buy properties like an investor and you just make a difference. So somebody can sell their property, like not like a fully remodeled property, something that's at full value, something that needs work. So let's, let's say somebody got like, a uh, band or something like that, um, uh, something like a distressed property, something that's undervalued, something that somebody be able to come in, put work into it, and profit off of it, you know what I'm saying? Because it got to be a win-win scenario for everybody. So, let's say somebody want to sell their property 50000 Uh, you find a deal, you negotiate the deal, you negotiate all the terms of the deal, they want to sell it for 50000 you're going to find somebody to buy it for 60000 65000 and you will make a difference. You make that ten to fifteen thousand, and yeah, the person who buys it, they want to invest into the property. They might go on to make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand off it. So it's a good deal for them. They ain't got no problem paying you the other price. You just got to find the deal, negotiate the deal, and add the tax on it, sell it to the buyer. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you, you after you did that first deal, uh, you said you did the second deal in March. Yeah, both of them do. Okay, so okay. They're both in That's Chicago. Right. So yeah. then, um, so after that, what did you continue doing to 2020? That was two years ago. Yeah, so, um, yeah, in Chicago, I literally, I went out there from scratch, too. Like, mm-hmm. I literally went out there. I didn't know nobody, bro. I was mm-hmm. in a fucked up situation. I went out there for a fresh start. Mm-hmm. Within three days, I ran into some, I, I got two properties in a contract. I ran into some good people. Ended up having an office and a brokerage. Got an attorney. Got all these kind of mentor like mm. scratch, bro. We literally went out there, the shit, bro. Went out there and, uh, and just started the network. I just started networking, bro. For three that's days, dope, I got an office, bro. Like, that's dope, broke, bro. bro. Some heavy ass people. That's bro. Like, dope, bro. I'm just like, and I got my property sold the next day. Like, 
me like five bands my first couple weeks out there. That's like, dope, bro. I'm scratched too. Like I didn't even know the shit was gonna work. I just started moving and the shit clicked. I'm like, all right, but I'm staying out this motherfucker. <laughs> like, I'm fucking with Chicago. So, like. you, <laughs> so you kept going. So you kept going from then on. So how much properties are you, are you at now? So like, oh, oh, I'm at like I'm under ten. I'm at like six or seven. Okay. But just within under these ten deals, bro. I'm at like I'm at over a hundred k profit, bro. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Like, That's fire. Last That's summer, fire. last summer, twenty twenty one, I sold a I sold a deal, bro. I made sixty three bucks off that, you know, sixty three thousand mm -hmm. off a wholesale deal. Sixty three thousand off for man. one wholesale deal. Off for one wholesale deal. Got it for sixty. Uh, got it for six. Where years. was that property at? It was in 19144 in Germantown, like Chestnut Hill, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a nice neighborhood, a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. like a, it's a decent neighborhood in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got the property for 60. It was worth up to like 270, 280. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. really only needed like 50 G's worth of work. So I got it for 60. So the as it is just like that for 123. Mm. And yeah, the person who bought it, he bought it for one twenty three. Let's say after taxes, they and all they all in at one forty. They put like fifty, sixty into it. They all in at two hundred. Mm. It's worth two seventy, yeah. two eighty. They gonna make like eighty, ninety racks off mm. it. So, and the owner got what he asked for. So it's a win, win, win scenario. Mm. I got my bread. The owner got, got his mm. bread. The nigga who bought it gonna make a bag off it. So mm. they gotta be mutually beneficial for yeah, everybody. Right, yeah, that's dope. That's definitely dope. 63000 over one play. That's super dope, bro. Uh, so, yeah. let's talk about, I know you do your, your, your Seiko Sundays. I know you got your classes. I know you got uh, certain things like that going on. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, what I do is... Excuse me. So, what I do is, I don't just sell a course. I, um, I don't just sell a course. I actually help people implement the knowledge. So, uh... Yeah, because that's my thing. Like I said, coming from where we come from, I feel like real estate is like, it's like a foreign language. It really takes a lot to learn real estate. Um, like you can learn a little bit about it. You can learn what to do, but it's still like background information. It's still certain questions you want to have and stuff like that. So I was in a certain situation where I was trying to learn real estate and like, you know, people charge thousands of dollars for information. It's like, once I figured this shit out, I'm like, bro, people who start trying to charge fifteen and twenty thousand dollars to learn this, bro, just like come on, bro. There's people charging information that's literally on the that's, that's literally on the tip of their tongue. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I ain't wanna do that, you know what I'm saying? Even when I started making my content and shit like that, like mm -hmm. I was never like no camera dude, but uh my old head, he really just talked to he really just talked to me like the power of social media and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And you don't gotta sell anything, just tell people what you do. Tell the so, world so, what you do, or let them and let people decide if they fuck with you or not. Say shit, you know what I'm saying? Organic. Exactly. So um, basically, like I said, basically what I do is I don't just sell a course. I got a community where people can come through, whether in person or on Zoom, and and we can do real estate together. Cause how could they? How could they get? How could they get up with that? Everything is in, everything is on my Instagram. My Instagram is at Sacko dot Investments. It's S A C K O dot Investments with an S at the end. Um, so my community, like, it's not so it's not like just classes. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm trying to get some cheese. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like. And I know everybody that's coming to learn this real estate shit, you try and get some cheese. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not coming here, you're not grabbing my course just to learn my real estate. No, you really trying to get paid out this shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, I like, I might spend like a day or two going over it, because like I said, it's fairly easy. You really just middleman and shit. The mm -hmm. only thing you really need to know is how to look at the property and be able to tell what it's worth mm -hmm. and be able to tell uh, how much it's going to cost to fix it. And you can calculate if it's a deal or not. Just based mm -hmm. off that, you know what I mean? Okay, so I got it. I'll spend like a day or two going through like shit like that, explaining to you, giving you the fundamentals. But then after that, we get right to work. Like my like we meeting three times a week. We not really just learning about general real estate. No, mm -hmm. we working. I'm helping people get real deals. Like we really, I'm trying to build a community of young hustlers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we all in a bag, and it's not just real estate too. Like I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna say I'm just like I created everything, but. 
uh, like, it's people that gravitated towards my shit that got mad about it, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's like, we kind of collaborated. And now it's to the point where it's different. It's not just real estate, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, one of my guys fix credit, one of my guys do stocks. Like, both them dudes together, they do a bunch of different shit. Like, you get your, you get your LLC made, open your business bank account, mm-hmm. your business funding. Um, <coughs> Get your website made. I got contract law, consumer law. Make sure you never fuck when it comes down to buying cars, houses, and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know the dealer should be trying to fuck me. Yeah, nah, you know what I'm true. saying he he'll make the he'll make that dealer look crazy. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like get you your shit, no money down, mm-hmm. new tires on that bitch, all mm-hmm. that low ass APR just off a of contract, reading contracts because you don't read the paperwork. You know what I'm saying, but that's another story. He he know a lot of shit. I mean, Hefe, you know stocks. Like stock options, day trading, bro, teach people how to day trade stocks. Mm. Like, and like the thing about stocks is like it's just like real estate. You know, and in the real estate, people got all these assumptions and shit like that. But mm. that's another reason why I started doing what I do because, like, when somebody that look like you, that come from where you come from, is telling you how to do it, it kind of makes it easier yeah, to learn. You to do it, so yeah, when sure. bro sat down and told me stocks, that shit was like. Yo, shit, this shit is easy. I always felt like stocks was like, you got to understand the third. Right, yeah, niggas, the, the nigga just like you sit you down and be like, nah, bro, this shit is this and the third. This means this, this means that, this means this, this is basically that. And you like, oh, all right. It's yeah. the same shit as been doing. <laughs> it's just different vocabulary right, behind right, this shit, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, so, right, right. long story short, my community, you come through, get your credit fixed, open your business bank account. It's like an all around business community, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Any aspect of business you want to step into. Like right here in the community for not no crazy ass feet, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just all genuine. Like, just ask questions. You want to learn how to open up? You want to learn how to open up the LLC? You want to do that shit right now? Mm. You want to get some business funding? Let's do that shit right now. You want to sell a property? Let's go do that shit right now. Get some bands together. Mm. You want to start a turtle business? You want to do Airbnb? Uh, I said Airbnb. Let's do that shit right now. We're not gonna sit and talk about it. Let's do it. Let's put that shit in motion. You feel me? Like, we work together. We get a bag together. And we it's a whole financial, uh, it's a whole good financial group. I just, I just want to bring like financial literacy to young people. That shit cool. Mm. I feel like that street shit dead, that. bro. I definitely respect that. That street bro. shit dead, bro. Like all that trap shit, all that other shit, bro. all that shit is dead. But things get book is just dying for less than a thousand dollars, bro. That's not shit, bro. That's lunch money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like things out here dying for curves, bro. When you can really get this same bread without. Without half the effort, you know what I'm saying? Just right, using your brain. So that's my goal, bro. Is get these young niggas on this shit, bro. Like you can still, you can still be fly. You still get your, mm-hmm. you still get your shit bust down. You mm-hmm. still pull up in your race. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With without having to worry about getting shot up in that bitch. Nah, without true. having to, you can really take that bitch and enjoy that bitch. Nah, you gotta duck your shoulders. You can really. And man, like nah, I'm on good right, life, right, my nigga. Nah, I'm not right. trying to be high, and I ain't trying to be stressed out. I ain't, I'm on the life, bro. Like that, that shit dead, bro. Definitely, man. Yeah, Hundred percent. That street shit is definitely dead. What you're doing is, is, is it's very, um, yeah. it's very, very smart. It's very, uh, like my goal is, bro. My goal is. That, I that wanna, was my next question. That's perfect. My goal is, I want to see like within my community. community. Like I want to see like forget all the street shit, bro. Like I said. I want to see 20 young niggas, like, because, you know, like, when people look at me, they be like, oh, you do real estate, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. look at me like I'm a regular nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, like, like, and first, before I say that, like, my whole everything, my presentation, the whole reason why, like, I chose to smoke on camera. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Because, like, I just want people to, like, I want I want people to understand, like, bro, real estate is not something that's, like, you have to be like this. Yeah, or that. yeah bro. No, like, no, no. it's not none of that, bro. Anybody can do this <laughs> shit, bro. Like, I'm a regular nigga. I just applied myself and I figured this shit out, bro. Like, real estate, real estate is it's all about a bag at the end of the day, bro. Right, you know yeah, what you're talking bro. about? You got your bag right. Even if your bag not right, you just gotta know how to find a deal. Right. The bag is right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? No, For somebody sure, else. Right. No, the numbers right. is right. The numbers is right. You don't give a fuck who you is, bro. Mm-hmm. If you handle business, you handle business. You know what I'm saying? No, so, it's um, true. My goal with my community is just like 
let's get a bunch of young niggas. Let's get a bunch of even if it's not young niggas. Let's get a bunch of even if it's not a young black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just a whole bunch just, of young hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like females, like females, I ain't, I ain't female, female, all yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and like be successful. And I don't know for where greatness. you no, come from. Right. Just, you know what I'm saying? Get together and do something positive. Let's, I just want to see. I just want to create a group of like 20, 30 young niggas, and I don't want to say young niggas. But young 30, individuals. Young individuals, you know what I'm saying? I want to make, I just want to see a group, 20, 30 of us, you feel me? Mm -hmm. 20, 30 of us, everybody probably look at us, whatever, whatever, but it's, it's 20 of us, bro. Name. 20 of us, everybody got 20, 30 racks in their bank account. Mm -hmm. Everybody got 750 credit school. Mm -hmm. Everybody got 20 racks in personal credit, 200 racks in business credit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a group of 20 of us, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what we can do with that? Man, you go buy some skyscrapers out of town, bro. Like, real <laughs> shit. Like, everybody, everybody is financially literate. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, we're not no group of dumbass young niggas. Yeah, like, no, it's true. And we still got our shit bust down. We still, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we still got that shit or we still moving how we move, but we ain't had to change ourselves to do it. You know what I'm nah, saying? That's right. my whole thing. You ain't got to change, change your character. To you ain't got to throw on that suit and tie. No, you can still do business, you can still do real estate and nah, be yourself. Bro, you know I respect saying? that. So, and I'm definitely you know glad you came like, good and told the culture that for sure. Because I know sure, a lot of bro. people need to hear that. I know a lot of people thought that. I might have just, like he said, been intimidated by certain situations and said, no, nah, I'm not yeah. doing it no more. And then it's Get like, it. every, other, every other group, every other demographic, they got that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. look at, not to, not nothing against nobody. It's actually a great thing that they do it. Mm -hmm. But like, look at the Mexicans, the Chinese, the mm -hmm. Arabs, the... Jews, anybody, they all like they take care of their people in a way where they people come to this country, they people come to this country with nothing but the clothes on their back and mm -hmm. they don't even speak the language, bro. And still somebody, somebody could see them and recognize them and see they from their same culture. And look out. From that point on, they ain't never got to worry about no car, they ain't got to worry about no credit, they ain't got to worry about no credit, <laughs> income, all of that. They took care of before they even got English. Uh, like within their community, they don't have to. They don't have to change. They don't even gotta learn English. They can still be themselves. They don't gotta fit, change the demographic, and still learn how to nah, do business. That's what we're saying. We need people, and we need that, bro. You're right. We definitely we need, need that, that, bro. And I set it up in a way where it's like, I ain't, I ain't charging no crazy prices for people to join. Like I said, I'm trying, I'm trying to let us. I'm, I'm into relationships. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Good business comes from good relationships. So nah, for sure. I, I'd rather, I like instead of me sitting here charging you this little three hundred, I'd rather. Come on, bro. Let's go off and make like thirty racks together. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. I'm more interested in that. I'm not gonna have three hundred. Yeah, 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 nah, okay. And that's super sad because everybody not like that, bro. Nah, I definitely bro. respect that, bro. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying, we I appreciate that because everybody not like that. But you know what I'm saying, um. So what's next for you? Like, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you got? My the thing, works? my thing is so now, um. Like the wholesaling is cool. Like it's definitely a good way to build capital. But mm -hmm. you know, money you got, you got to do something with your money. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Like one thing to make money is nothing to keep. Right, money. right, you right. Invest right. in the right thing. So my next step before this year over, bro, I really want to buy an apartment. Mm -hmm. like, that's my. That's what. That's going to be my key to my you generation. Definitely do it in March. I think you can definitely do it. That's going to be my key to my generation of wealth, bro. I want an apartment building. Uh, like imagine having a hundred units, bro. Imagine mm -hmm. having a hundred people paying you rent every month. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Imagine a hundred fifty people paying paying you rent every month. You carrying a hundred twenty racks a month, doing nothing. You got poverty managers taking mm -hmm. care of everything. You know, right? You really had your way out here, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really do what you want, and you got ownership. Let's stay shit. The fan one day, you need some cheese. Sell off one of the buildings. Shit, we're at one point three million. I'm right <laughs> back on. <laughs> I'm no right cat. back on, no you cat. know what I mean? No cat. No you cat. take that and, you know what I'm saying? I think internationally, like, my whole family, we African, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I got family in London, Germany, uh, Paris, all over this world, bro. So, mm -hmm. I, I, I got places to go, you nah, feel me? Like, right, and I ain't right. trying to work. If you're working a job, you ain't going to be able to do you nothing. Move around, you feel me? Nah, I need nah, financial freedom. Nah, so, nah, for stack sure. these apartment buildings, you know what I'm saying? Stack that rental income. Put, put my money in the right place because I opened up some businesses and that should be global, you know, mm. type shit, bro. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the next step. Nah, for sure, bro. That's definitely, 
I, I like that, bro. That's definitely tough, bro. Apartment building, that's definitely tough. That's definitely generational wealth for sure, bro. Uh, um, but I just want to say it was definitely a pleasure having you on the show, my nigga. Like, for sure. Um, you sure. a great guest, bro. They're going to love sure, this episode. Sure. I know they're going to love this episode, bro. It's a great for episode. Sure, sure. But now a lot of people probably going to run it back and see certain stuff. Go, go. You know write it down and all that. Go Can today. I drop with Jewel? Yeah, what? So, it's uh, the yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure, like for sure. drop with Jewel. This is a clip. Go Let ahead. me drop with Jewel. Drop so, with If you want to get into real estate, uh, first thing I say, all right, so I can't really, I, we ain't got the time for me to really give you the whole backstory and everything like that, but mm -hmm. the information is out there. If you're looking to grab my course or looking to talk to me directly, join my community, whatever. At, Tell them how to get you. Yeah, at sacco.investments uh, on Instagram. Um, if you want to sit down and just learn what, about more about real estate generally, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not no gatekeeper. Like I said, I'm not going to charge the wife for the information that's on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. Half of what I learned, I learned on YouTube. Half of it was on YouTube and online stuff. The other half would be real life experiences. But I got the information that gave me the, uh, the confidence to start really off of YouTube, I'm not gonna mm. lie, it's free information, it's free information ever, so God, for somebody just that's look, successful up, at it. look up wholesaling real estate, look, uh, understand the concept of it, learn what you're doing and all that, once you get that, uh, step one, you're getting ready to learn how to, you, now you want to try and get some bread, you really try to find the first deal or whatever, step one, go on propstream.com, P-R-O-P-S-T-R-E-A-N, uh, or any other real estate website where you can buy a list of properties. You can so on these websites you can buy a list of properties like you can buy a list of three thousand vacant ran down properties. So you can buy a list of three thousand bandos and send you can contact everybody on that list. Like me, I like to do mass text. I'll send everybody a text on that list saying like, uh, hey, my name is Reese, I'm interested in your property at like at one two three four Main Street. Just wanted to hit you up and see if you're interested in something. I'll send a text like that out to all 3,000 people with vacant band of uh, vacant properties with them. So, uh, like I said, PropStream.com, step one. Step two, pull a list of uh, vacant properties on, uh, use that filter to pull a list of vacant properties. Step three, send everybody a text on that list just saying, hey, how are you doing? Um, just wanted to see if you're interested in selling. Once you find somebody that's interested in selling, uh, you want to try to put this property on the contract at like 30 to 40 percent or whatever the full value of the property is you want to get on the contract for like 30 to 40 percent of that and you're just going to sell to somebody else more uh next step i would say is to um once you get this property in the contract let's say the zip code to this property is like 40218 you're going to go and you're going to pull a list on that same website prop stream of everybody who ever purchased the property in that same zip code and you're going to contact them directly like hey i see you already invested in this area would you be interested in this property too and boom you're going to have you going to have people as long as the numbers is right you're going to have people not you're going to have like five six people probably ten people ready to see the property the next day so um uh, I forgot exactly which number in the step that was, but <laughs> I know it was step one. I think one, that was four. I, I something think, like that. Yeah, step right. one, going prop stream. Uh, step two, pull a list of vacant properties. Step three, uh, send That's everybody a text on that list. Step four, get the property down for 30 to 40% of market value. Step five, uh, pull that zip code, find everybody who put a house in that zip code, contact them. Step six, uh, you got the property for 30 to 40% of the value. You're going to sell it to that person at ten to $15,000 more than what you got in the contract for. And step seven, that gets your bread. Like, Close. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> it. Right, like, right, like, right. It really don't cost no bread to do it. Either. Nah, that's stupid. It's really deal, easy. The only nah. thing you need is a cell phone. You get y'all all, all of the steps to wholesale this yeah. now. You just get y'all all of the steps. So everybody start wholesaling. I'm about to start wholesaling. I know y'all know what this means. Y'all see this episode, y'all know what this means. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm a hustler, man. I'm a Bro, gonna have a property flip mm -hmm. in the next before. I'm right on the same vibe with him. Look, I need a, I need an apartment building too. Look, you know what I'm saying I'm not playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, look, but look, we're gonna get into the culture questions, right? Um, I got a couple coach questions. What I'm gonna do is I thought I was gonna keep switching them up every episode, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna just start adding on more coach questions to the coach questions. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Stuff that's going on, right? So my first coach question is who's your goat? Bron, Kobe, or MJ? 
manager of her. Okay. Manager okay. For sure. Okay. Okay. Favorite show, Martin or Fresh Prince? Fresh Prince. Okay. Fresh Prince. Okay. Okay. Jordans. Would you rather a whole closet full of Joys or a whole closet full of Yeezys? <laughs> like I'm talking about every any joy you can pick or any easy you can pick. So I'm not gonna lie, the Jordans is the classics. Yeah. But the Yeezys you can really get drippy Real with them. You know, so I don't wanna shit on the Jordans, hey, but I, I, I gotta go with the Yeezys. I ain't gonna hold it. Well, alright, so food, Spanish food, Caribbean food, soul food, Chinese food, or Italian food? You got to do African. That's Caribbean food. African food, not Caribbean food. That's no, different. Afri- African That's different. Food. Food. Well, African. When I say Caribbean food, I mean like African food, Haitian food, yeah, Jamaican yeah, yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, That's, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Food, yeah. food, yeah. that, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's why yeah. I say Caribbean food. But, all right, so, that's, all right, so I, oh, African food. Yeah. You don't go African food because you ain't yeah. African. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you got to do African food. Look, all right, so look, from look. From every episode on after this, look, y'all gonna see the African food on there. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, look, let me put it in the notes, look. Oh, Alright, look, Xbox or PlayStation? I ain't gonna hold you, I was never really into games like that, bro. Uh, if I had to pick, though, I'm gonna pick PlayStation. Okay, okay. Alright, now this is a new culture question. Was Michael B. Joey wrong? For what he did on the red cop when he told Shorty? The whole corny, the whole corny. Oh, when you call me corny or something? Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think so. You <laughs> try to play with me now, bitch. Did you say I was corny? What's up? Like, I done been through that shit. No, <laughs> no, no, I thought I was. Nah, I don't know. Nah, you're not getting away with that. He said, bitch, I've been waiting 15 years. He's <laughs> <laughs> not playing with it, right? Hell all right, no. so look, all right, last coaching question, right? He is start Jama... PTSD and shit. <laughs> he's so, he's so he like, started like shaking like said, he, He's corny nigga, right? Before she said anything, corny nigga, he right? Was he was on it. He was on time. I said I was on time. All right, but last question. Is John Moran tripping right now? The whole gun, <laughs> this shit in the NBA. He doing too much or what you think? He definitely doing too much, but then I also seen, I forgot, Somebody put a tweet out saying something about um, people don't understand people. Uh, like they highlight us and people that come from where we come from and mm-hmm. highlight them in a certain way without really understanding them. They just take their actions and run with it. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I can't because I don't trust the media. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. I don't trust a lot. They of always gonna exaggerate when she's they bad. They really gonna make it seem worse and they gonna so, like OD on you. I definitely so don't get that. me wrong. Certain shit is like, bro, you shouldn't even have been in. Like, mm-hmm. like the drone with the gun in the video, it's like, bro, even if it wasn't a gun, you just, come on, bro, that's just, you can't explain that, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I understand, because I'm a young nigga that come from a certain background, it's like, oh, I'm lit, nigga, I got, you know what I'm saying, no, like, so, true. but when you in a certain crowd, it's like, if I feel him, it's like, bro, it's me, like, I'm just trying to be myself, like, you know what I'm saying, but, I don't know, it's a, it's a cross between two, I could say, like, so, like, as, in a whole, I could say you wrong. <laughs> certain right, so shit is like, he yeah, tripping. certain as a whole, yeah, you mm-hmm. definitely tripping. Certain mm-hmm. shit, as a man, you shouldn't even be in certain situations. Mm-hmm. But sure. I get it, though. I get it. I yeah, it happens sometimes. Everybody make mistakes. I, I definitely well. believe everybody makes some mistakes, and I'm not going to crucify them at all. I, mean, I just, yeah, I just I ain't another crucifying question, because that's what's going on. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, we still fuck with you, Jai. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, if you my man, I'm like, you wrong, bro. I'm going to tell you don't fuck up that bag. I'm going to just tell you don't fuck up that boy, and don't fuck up that bag with Like, bro, what you doing, bro? You bugging. You can't bug it, you doing your thing. Yeah. But I don't get by all means. I ain't gonna get crucify it, you. Know? I ain't gonna yeah, you, you I bug in and I nah, nah, I ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna understand. Like, yeah, only he knows that shit. That's like, true. That's you know true. Saying? That's true. But we out of here, y'all. It's another. This is this is another uh, episode of Punch the Organic. Had my guy Reese down here. Sake on investments. Took that real estate talk. Yes, took like, got into a little bit of his history, um, culture. Give y'all some big facts in this episode, man. This is a great episode. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and definitely comment. Leave them comments in there. Tell us who y'all want to interview next and all of that. And um, go follow on Instagram at Coach the Organic and follow on TikTok at Coach the Organic. We out here.